okay? Um, the next thing that we've been doing is the emails, right? So our own strategy, not through the Kickstarter team, but, but within our internal energies is uh, what, what can we do that's not about the Facebook ad manager? Well, we have taken on ourselves to master and own the email wing of the strategy, right? In other words, why can't you send out an email to thousands of people and then have that email be the place that says, here's our Kickstarter, please go here at this time. So how do you do that? Uh, how do you find those emails? Then what do you say in those emails? Almost all email strategies fail. Um, I've never on purpose opened my email marketing emails that I get in my inbox, right? Like no, it's the, one of the most annoying, abusive things in the person's life, like in their professional life, is the spam that they get. I was a little bit anxious that I was gonna be adding to that. Um, I, will, I won't go into how we got the emails. It was, it was very um, sort of clean and on the surface, but long story short, basically through um, a series of connections, um, some people let us have emails, um, a lot of emails from different connections. When we began our email strategy, we began with 15,000 emails. Um, and now the goal was, okay, so these people didn't sign up. This is gonna be super shady, super super gray zone, gray area. Like, I hate to be the one that's spamming people. So what could be a way for us to reach out to people in that list that we just assembled? We knew from all the people that let us have the emails. We knew that um, these would be sort of adjacent culturally and product-wise to our company anyway. So we knew these were people that were gonna be at least interested. So like we weren't gonna be super un unwanted or unpleasant. We just knew this was a good, a good set of emails, but the question was they didn't know about us. They, they didn't necessarily wanna be on our list of emails. Our strategy was to be as least salesy as possible, on marketing, on jargon, on commercial as possible. And that we knew how to do because because through Media Day, we've had five, six years of working with nonprofits, right? And we knew how the nonprofit language works. We knew how the nonprofit vibe works. It's all about mission, it's all about impact, it's all about improvement, it's all about uh, making the world a better place, it's all about sacrifice, it's all about working together. All these different themes are the bread and butter of a nonprofit. And we just knew that language from working for six years in that space and still continuing to work in that space. Um, whereas most, most commercial companies will be like 20% off, uh, buy one, get one free. They don't have any way to talk to a customer other than through a, a commercial financial incentive. Um, and so I knew that the nonprofit vibe overperforms or should overperform over the commercial vibe just because we hate to be sold to. But if someone says there's a mission that, that matches our passions that's very interesting and so I, I i said let's make pretend not not fake but like let's write as if we were um, a nonprofit, and let's let's describe burst not as a company with 20 percent off but as a company with a mission as a company that like matches the person's uh interests as a company with where the person the parent can work together with with the company all these were meaningful and true statements right we weren't just taking advantage of language that might work like these were this is the, like the mission and impact tremendously influences and, and 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 motivates my life right and so burst is not a nonprofit legally from a, a structural standpoint but it is not it is like a nonprofit it's like a social enterprise that's a category of like a, a for-profit legally but a nonprofit in purpose that's kind of what, what burst is it's not a like on just another company, right? And so when we, when we infused all of our nonprofit language and, and meaning and impact and purpose and belonging and family and, and goodness, all that you just infused jam-packed with, with all those good values and, and thoughts to, 50, to 15,000 people, you know, it wasn't that bad. It didn't crash and burn at all. Um, in the first batch of emails, we did have like a couple of unsubscribes, 
that's fine. People were like, what is this? Like, stop emailing me. We had a few hate emails like, hey, like, how did you get my email? Stop writing me, like, unsubscribe. That's fine. Only like 10 out of 15,000. I was, I was expecting like hundreds or thousands. We only got 20 or so or 10 hate emails. Maybe like a couple of hundred unsubscribes. Super well. Um, about, a, about, I think, a 10 or 15% open rate. Not great. But kind of par for the course, right? Par for the course for the um, industry. Second email, also very purpose driven, purpose oriented, mission impact, went super well, even better than the last one, than the first one. Uh, almost no unsubscribes and um, almost no hate emails, only like one instead of 10. Um, but now we began to get emails that were saying, thank you for writing these things. How can we help? How can we be part of this? Which is crazy, um, unbelievable. And then we sent the third email last week that got zero hate, hate emails. Only one person said, hey, I don't really have a family. Would you mind if you don't subscribe me? Which is like super nice. But then one person printed out, I got a letter in the mail, in the physical mail. One person printed out our email to them. Then they typed up their own page long essay response and then they printed that out. And they attached our printout and their and their essay into a, a, an envelope and they mailed us the envelope of our email and their response. Filled with, you know, all the same values that we were channeling in our, in our emails. And um, that's when I knew we we're starting to make a connection in terms of how many people have opened these emails in the history of the campaign for the last four weeks. I would say the open rate is now, well, like it, it was like 10% in the beginning, then 15. Um, then for the third email, we did a super clever strategy with how we called, like with how we phrased the title, a 60% open rate. But basically we now have about 2,400 actively engaged email readers of our, of our newsletter after four, four weeks of, of insane amount of, of effort and strategy and thinking about it. Now we still have 13,000 people that haven't opened. Uh, and so now that the question is how do you break through that barrier? How do you break through that um, choice that people have made when they see it to not open it? We'll see. But I think it's just a matter of continuing to earn the reputation and, and earn the respect from people. So, so like from the, in, in, in the, in a third email, you know, we had 50, 60% open rate, but, um, but only within the people that were already reading us from the people that were not reading us, we had like 5%. So 5% is still a lot. Um, and so now we'll see. So long story short, the email strategy has been very, very successful. The Facebook ad campaign is going really well with now close or lower than $2 per click. We've been building our following on social media. So starting from scratch with zero presence, zero boosts, no influencers, no like big brands, no big name support, like from zero, you've got no one following you. How do you get people to follow you? We now are over a thousand and that's a real number. That's That number is significant in terms of social proof, in terms of um, other people feeling like it's a, it's a real company. So all the different strategies for the last two weeks have been firing on all cylinders and we've been just bursting at the seams, no pun intended, uh, at, at, at like finding ways to make this work and we've been going a lot better. And so I guess what I want to say to close this is it was really good to record the bad video because there's a good video to follow that. It's meaningful, it's awful, it's amazing, it's, it's tough, it's incredible it's all these things and um, hope you're enjoying it